Most deer hunters, myself included, for a long time, when I thought about good deer habitat, this is what I thought about. Bigger hardwoods, open. Why? Because when are we hunting? In the fall. What's happening in the fall? Acorns raining down. So this is where we see deer. But if we look a little bit closer, let's get down to a deer eye view here. How much cover is actually there? Now you think, oh, that's got all kind of cover. It's got overhead cover where there's branches, but as far as anything else, it's not there. And there's very little food in here. There's going to be very little food in here until late August, even later than that really here. Uh, late September, we start getting acorns dropping, uh, the early ones, and then they'll fall on through. Now, but until they drop, there's not much food here. So, if you're like me, you also plant plots through summer, through fall, all right, because we know we're getting good nutrition into them then. But, what kind of cover do your plots provide for turkeys, which is one of my biggest issues, the old turkey? What kind of cover does that provide for turkeys? All right, what kind of cover does it provide for a deer to bed in? What if there was a way we could do both? After doing a lot of research, uh, I'm trying to do just that, and I'm going to take you with me because we're fixing to go look now. Two years ago, a tornado came through, and it devastated everything looked like what we just looked at. Like that. Big stands of mixed pine and hardwood. When it finished, and I'm going to try to include footage of it, it looked like this. This is one of our prime bedding areas over here. It's been devastated. That tree's down, but thank the guys from the power company. The power has been restored. So we got that going and thank the Lord Jesus that it didn't hit the house. All of us are good. Except everything was thrown in matchbox like matchsticks. Just crumple trees all rough. So we got them to log. So I got to thinking, what can we do positive that gives us both those things, food and cover? Because if you look at this, if I just let it naturally regrow, what am I getting in the natural regrowth? Well, I'm getting sumac, lots of sumac. I'm getting dog fennel everywhere you look, plenty of fennel. All right, now, after researching it, there's a way to do both, and it's called an oak savanna. I, I didn't know about oak savannas. I just kept looking it up and researching it. But let me caution you early. If you're thinking about doing an oak savanna, know that you're going to spend some money and you're going to work. And there is a lot of work. Unless you hire it out, you're going to work. All right. So what's the difference between here and an actual oak savanna? Well, number one, first thing we did is run fire through this side. All right, and if you look across where this savanna is at, the first thing you look at is the cover. I take two steps off this road. This stuff is over chest high. All right, a deer can just step in and disappear. Oop, one step, one hop. So cover. You got cover year round this breast high. That makes a difference. Now, since we ran fire through it, let's look at the different composition of what grew back. We got muscadines. I'm gonna try to get you a good shot of some muscadines here. Look on the vines. Grapes, lots of grapes, and we almost never have grapes. Lots of grapes. You got beautyberry, lots of beautyberry mixed in with this fennel. You also got, even after a fire came through, little oaks that are coming up inside the savannah. Now, as you can see, 
I saved out as many white oaks as I could into groves. All right, now that's what I'm going to spray the understory of those, open them up, and keep them as little open areas where turkey and deer can come and feed and take one step away and be in good cover. What's the other thing that comes up? For me, invasives. That's where the work's gonna come in. China berry. Piles of China berry. You look across at like these groves, you got a big China berry tree and you've got one oak and you've got some elm and sweet gums trying to regenerate. There's a good example of a China berry right there. That's going to have to be hacked and squirted. Now, what I'm in the process of doing, and this is where the work comes in, is going through every place on here where there's an undesirable species and killing it. All right, and I'm killing it with a mix of Garlon, a little bit of Roundup, a little bit of Arsenal, and Conquer. Make sure you put your surfactant in there because it kills a lot better. Make sure you use the blue dye because then you know where you've sprayed. If not, you getting this stuff, yeah, you can get lost and forget what you sprayed. Uh, let's go take a look at where we're progressing so far. All right, phase one of an oak savanna, you got to have oaks. Now, do we have as many oaks? As I wish we did, no. All right, but tornado, as you can see by the top of this one, didn't give me a whole lot of choice in that. This is basically what was left over. All right, so phase one, you're thinning down to leave open space between oak trees. All right, so the tornado kind of did that for us. We had the logger harvest, he saved a bunch. Phase one, thin it. Thin, leave your oak standing. You can leave, if you're like where I'm at, we got a variety of oak trees here. You can leave your white oaks, you can leave your reds, you want both. Uh, leave your waters, leave your pin oaks, leave your swamp chestnuts, everything in red and white family. Do I have as many as I want to? No, but here's the good thing. The next phase of creating oak savanna is to run a fire through it. Now we fired this entire 25 acres last year. We burned a lot more than that but that was the first thing that we did here. You may think if you hadn't done it before that well we ran a fire through it and it killed it. No. All right it will set some things back but if it's bigger than your little finger it's not going to kill it. And a side benefit <laughs> It releases a lot of things from the seed bank, so that's a great thing. But not everything that gets released is something you want to. There's 10 million China Bear sprouts. Now, you see these brown patches? Every one of those, here's a China Bear that I've already started to treat. He's sick and he's dead, he just doesn't know it yet. But I have to go through by hand and spray every one of these doggone invasives or undesirables, which for me is China Berry, Privet. You see a sweet gum here that's taking it on the chin too. It won't be long, that'll be dead. Uh, and if you look close, you see I missed a couple here and there. I have to go back through and get every one of those. It's an ongoing project. That's what I was saying about the work. All right, you got to put in the work. This is going to be a years long process before it gets pristine and perfect. But in the meantime, there's a whole lot of quail whistling out here. I've seen turkeys coming through, especially right after we burned, and there's enough deer feed here. It's more than I've got anywhere on the farm. It's loaded. That's from sunlight coming down. Getting the sun, burning, setting stuff loose from the seed bank, the good and the bad. The good news is this, if you keep running fire, we're going to run fire about the first five years, we're going to do it annually. Every year I'm going to burn this. And what that does, it keeps it in that beautiful early succession and it establishes a habitat that's made for things that can receive fire and live. All right. So the things that shouldn't be there, fire over the course of time, it's going to kill them. Now, I'm not big on burning through oaks, but 
You ever noticed when you light a fire and you're burning through woods, when it gets to an oak stand, it hits those leaves. There's a lot of air in between the leaves. The fire goes from here down to there. If you do it careful, make sure the wind's down, back it through on a cool day is even better. It's not going to kill them. All right. But where it hits these grasses, that's going to rage through. Hopefully setting back a lot of sweet gums and undesirables. Now, if you like me, and a lot of you are, uh, you go through phases in life. I used to get really irritated about not having giant bucks on the farm, and hopefully every three to four years we see a really nice one. May not kill him, but we see him. I think this is going to help. Acre for acre doesn't get better than that, than oak savanna habitat, and it's going to take a while. It's going to be years, but we're going to get it there. If Lord willing and physically we hold up and can find a little money to get it done with. Now, the other thing, I'm past all that. My main focus, let's make it better. Whatever is in our power to make it better for turkeys, for deer, for your kids, for your grandkids. That's what we're doing at this point. That's the point of something like an oak savanna. Not like a food plot. It's not going to be, I did it right now and it mattered right now. This will take a few years to get pristine, but I'll do follow-up updates as we go. The main thing, don't hunt ticked off. Hunt happy. Enjoy being out in the Creator's creation. I'm all about it now. Whatever comes through, not so much the tornado, but however it comes out, if I see a four-pointer, I'm hunting happy. Thank you guys for watching. Like, subscribe, check us out on Farm Focused. We'll be giving you some updates, hopefully catching some more hogs, and we'll see you next time on the Whitetail Cartel. Thanks for watching.